away from him. But this, you leave it. I did note that briefly there was a, a TPD officer in uniform in the courtroom this morning, it was briefly, uh, and the uh, bailiff could tell him to step out, but apparently he was a witness. Who is that, Ms. Captain? Bill Brennan. He was briefly in the courtroom. Is he going to be testifying to that? Yes, sir. At some point in time, we need to take that. Juries <coughs> in the courtroom? collected that was later analyzed by Sergeant Corbett. 
Um, did you make any efforts to try to locate any phones of interest that were in the area of Premier Gym during the times that we see the suspect people present there? Yes. Tell us about that. We had already obtained information um, on cell phone from the cell phone providers concerning Wendy Adelson, members of her family, obviously Dan Markell, in doing um, research into that, we came up with no real, obviously none of those people besides Markell and Wendy Adelson were in Tallahassee at the time. And what people are you referencing? Repeat, please. What people are you referencing? So none of those people other than Wendy and Dan. The the Adelson family, the Charlie Adelson, Donna Adelson, Harvey Adelson. All right, so we collected phone records for those three people. Correct. Okay. And what about the area of Premier Gym? What was done there? Premier Gym was Premier Gym in that area was ultimately um, the cell data for that was obtained by <clears throat> by our department for all phones in the area at the time that Dan Markell was at Premier Gym because our lead was there's a Prius that's similar to what the reporting person for the actual homicide described and we have a Prius that's following him from Premier. So we, we obtained all the phones in the phone numbers in the area of Premier Gym to cross-reference with the Adelson's phone records. And how many phone numbers did that yield? For which part though? That were, that were in the area of Premier Gym or being serviced by that cell tower that services that area. Oh, I don't even know. I have no idea. It's a ton, a thousand, thousands of phones. All right, and would the cross-referencing of what was resulted from that request uh, about the phones in the area of Premier Gym with the cell phone records provided in reference to the Adelsons and Wendy and Dan Markell have been done by Sergeant Corbett? That's correct. Okay, and what I'm trying to get back to is how we narrowed down the Sun Pass. So as a result of that analysis, did you get a better idea of when you thought that Sun Pass transponder would have passed through particular toll booths? Yes, but the, the Sun Pass transponder activates and there's a record that Department of Transportation keeps showing this account, doesn't show a particular car, it shows that account having triggered a toll at, when it goes through one of the automated toll places. Okay, but initially all you know is a Prius headed we, we knew toward that there Thomasville. Were, right, there, that there was a Prius heading towards Thomasville Road. Down um, Thomasville Road toward the interstate, right? Right. Okay. And, and so... But it's really the phone records, which we're going to hear from Sergeant Corbett later, gave you a smaller window of when you think that that vehicle may have passed through the toll plazas, correct? Eventually, yes. Okay, so I want to talk about that more narrow window. Um, which toll plazas did you suspect the Prius passed through? Initially, the most direct direction here, sir. Overruled. The most direct route, if there was any type of. Um, any type of connection to South Florida would be the toll plaza at Wildwood, Florida, which is 75 South of Ocala Road. We went through that, once again, hundreds, until we got the actual phone uh, number in question to track we didn't know exactly which way they went. We didn't know if that was transponder, uh, SunPass transponder was even active. Okay. But ultimately you 
have reason to look at the toll plazas at either end of Alligator Alley, South Cor Florida, correct? Correct. On I-75 at near Naples mm -hmm. on the west coast and Fort Lauderdale on the east coast. I-75 traverses through there and ultimately we determined that was the route that was taken. Instead of going straight up the spine of the state on the turnpike, the travel was out west on 75 and then up the west coast and intersecting with I-10. All right, and how many toll plazas would you pass there if you took that route? Just one either way. All right, and did you request, again, in conjunction with the work of Sergeant Corbett that we're going to hear more about later, the toll records for specific toll plazas at specific times? I did. Could you tell us what those times were? Objection. There's Overruled. The question, as I understand, what specific times and dates did he request? I'll overrule hearsay objection. Would you like the? Leaving Miami or returning to Miami? Both, please. Let's start with leaving Miami, headed to Tallahassee. The transponder registered activity. Well, right now, I'm just saying the hearsay objection. I'm the question just, was, what did you request? I requested toll activity for any type of Toyota Prius. at the toll plaza in Broward County on I-75, which is also Alligator Alley, westbound. I requested that for July 16th in the, in the afternoon. And then I also requested the toll activity for Toyota Prius on July 18th, 2014, once again in the afternoon evening hours at the opposite end of Alligator Alley at Naples. So that would be eastbound. You're only told one direction or the other. All right. And were you asking for, I, I'm looking for a transponder that fits both of these profiles. It was in the window on July 16th, heading westbound, and it was also in the window on July 18th, heading eastbound. Yes. So right. when I was asking for, is there a record of a vehicle that went through during these times, same vehicle, both at the east end and the west end, on these days, only and, one vehicle doing that. And it has to be a Prius. Yes. All right. And how many transponder numbers resulted from that search? Just one. Objection here, sir. Overruled. All right. And what year was the Prius that passed through those two toll booths at those operative dates and times? That's the same that you at this point. Okay. Was... What was the transponder number that you were provided? A sustained the hearsay objection at this point. Did you do anything with the transponder number that you were provided? I requested from Florida Department of Transportation the customer information that subscribed to that transponder. All right, and upon receiving that information, did you learn that the transponder was assigned to a particular business? Yes. And what business was that? Sustained. I'm going to show you States Exhibit 127. This contains toll records with certification. 
indication of authenticity? Is, does this state's exhibit contain a fair and accurate copy of all the records you received from your son past whole record requests? To the best of my knowledge, yes. At this time, I'd ask to move an evidence state's exhibit 127. Object. Here's set the proper foundation. There's a certificate of authenticity. Yes, Your Honor. That objection overruled. Is the item admitted? They're admitted. Thank you. All right. So what business was the transponder in question assigned to? It's a business in North Miami called Hybrid Rent-A-Car, and it's also called Save Gas. What is the... What was the second name? Save Gas. And what is the address of that business? 11032 Biscayne Boulevard, Miami, Florida. All right. And have you had the opportunity to review any documentation collected from that business regarding the Prius in question? Yes. I'm going to approach with what I've marked as State's Exhibit 82. I am. How are you familiar with it? This was, uh, this is the rental agreement for a Toyota Prius that is completed and shows the name of the renting customer as Louis Rivera. And is this a fair and accurate copy of the documentation you were provided from this business regarding the rental of this Prius? Yes. And this is the rental agreement which corresponds with the transponder number you received from the toll path, toll booth, sun pass search? Correct. All right. Judge, at this time, I would ask to move into evidence State's Exhibit 82. Certificate of authenticity? Yes. I beg your pardon? Yes, sir. All right. Either side, which object? Objection, PSA, lack of business record, foundation. Overruled. It will be admitted. I have the objector, please. Believe he's doing that. Maybe explain to the jury a little bit of what this conversation is about. There, there is a statutory procedure in Florida where if a business certifies that these are accurate business records and there's an affidavit to that effect that those records are admissible in court unless some specific objection is timely made before trial. So that's what we're talking about. Certificate of authenticity, that's why these items have been admitted. The idea is we don't want to have to bring in a custodian from every business that have records just to certify their records when there's real no dispute as to these records. The other monitors are okay? Yes. Louis Rivera. What address is Louis Rivera list? The document shows 
Lewis Rivera's address is 1805 Normandy Drive, number three, Miami Beach, Florida. Um, this is the phone number that, he, that is listed for Mr. Rivera? Yes, phone number is below. 305-570-8153. That was put at the top of the rental contract. It indicates word brother. And below that is a phone number 786-372-5986. The year indicated is a 2008, and that is correct by the state highway Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicle registration for that business that was obtained through the transponder and this contract. Right. Is that year of the vehicle consistent with what law enforcement suspected based on the surveillance images? That It was uh, checked out or rented on the 15th of July, 2014, and it was due back, according to this, on the 17th of July. How was it paid for? Cash. Special strobe effect on the monitors, yeah. also. Okay, That's, we can get that extra. And was this document also provided with this exhibit? Yes, the rental agency made a copy of the renter's driver's license. Is this yes. Approach and show you what I've marked as State's Exhibit 128. You recognize State's 128? Yes. How do you recognize that? These are uh, phone records from the two defendants. Specifically, ask you about Lewis Rivera. Did you request the phone records in reference to the 305 570 8153 Yes. That's the number that was listed on the rental contract in his driver's license? <coughs> Correct. And are those contained in State's Exhibit 128? It should be. Okay. And the phone number that's listed as brother on the rental agreement, 786-372-5986. Did you do any additional work in reference or request any records in reference to that number? Yes, we, we obtained <coughs> records and were able to identify the user of that number. Approach with States Exhibit 129. You reviewed States 129? Yes. <coughs> a fair and accurate copy of the records you received in reference to that 5986 number that was listed on the rental agreement as brother. Yes. Okay. And were you able to 
to identify the user of the phone number listed in his brother? Yes. How were you able to do that? The phone number that shows that the brother that's indicated as brother on the rental contract um, was determined through research on Facebook and other means that it was. So I'm talking about Jack. This is hearsay or hearsay. Sustained. Showing you what I've marked as six exhibit one thirty. Yeah. Um, States 130? Yes. How do you recognize that exhibit? This is, uh, should be information from a Facebook account. What Facebook account? Tutor Dade. Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. Does the uh, disc in States Exhibit 130 contain a business record affidavit of authenticity for the Facebook of Tutor Dade? My understanding is it does. It has certification written on it. Okay. And what is contained on that list? Images and dialogue on that Facebook page. All right. Who's Tudor Dave? Spell that. If you want. Spell that. What is it? T U T U T O space D A D E. Do that again. I'm sorry. T U T O space D A. Who is Tudor Dave? Objection, Judge. Calls for speculation. Well, there's no predicate. For, I'll sustain the objection. Okay. And you mentioned that you used the Facebook records. You used Facebook records to verify who the number is that belongs to the 5986 number on that rental contract that's listed as brother. Correct. And when you use the Facebook records to verify that, did you use the Facebook records contained in the State's Exhibit 130? Yes. And was that phone number associated with the rental car contract listed as brother, ending in 5986, the phone number associated with the Facebook account on State's Exhibit 130? Yes. And who is pictured as the owner I've of the I've sustained a hearsay objection to that, Ms. Kappelman. If you want to put these things in evidence, let's put them in evidence so we can talk about them. Otherwise, right. it's hearsay. States Exhibit 128, you previously testified, was the phone records of the two defendants. I'm sorry, that's not correct. This shows, I, I was reading it wrong on the thing, but it shows that it's the phone records for Louis Rivera. Okay, that's 128. 128 Louis Rivera phone records. Okay, States Exhibit 129. The 129 are phone records for Sigfredo Garcia. Ask to move into evidence states 128 and 129. These have a certificate of authenticity? Yes, Your Honor. I wish to be heard. No, Judge. No, Your Honor. 128 and 129 are admitted. Does the Facebook account in States Exhibit 130 have a business record? Yes. At this time, I ask to move in evidence states exhibit 130. Is there a certificate of authenticity on this? I believe the witness said yes. there was. Yes, Your Honor. Right. We'll go to sidebar. Yes, sir. I sustain the objection as to States Exhibit 130. Uh, however, I admit, it, admit States Exhibit 76 and 77, subject to objection from Garcia.
answer to the question. Is this part of what you got from Facebook? Part of the record you just got from Facebook? It is. Okay. And is the phone number listed as brother on the rental agreement for the Prius shown on this document? It is. Right there at the bottom of Versus phone numbers underneath current city. Okay. Mr. Kaufman, you're going to need to be a little better of record here. We're having a hard time hearing you. So, what I want to know is we've got Sex Exhibit 82, the rental car contract. Yeah. Is this the number for brother? Yes. I couldn't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Who is this a photograph of? Defendant Sigfredo Garcia. and show you what I've marked as state's exhibit. You want to put the monitor down? Mm -hmm. Kind of hiding the dirty table and see what that is. Yeah, we're going to have to get the monitor down. Yeah, we're going to have to get the obtained during the investigation. It's a, a pawn shop receipt from Miami, Florida. And is that, does the exhibit contain a business record affidavit of authenticity for the pawn shop ticket? It does. And does the pawn shop ticket contain the name of who it is that's pawning an item? It does. And who is that? Sigfredo Garcia. Objection, Judge. Your legal objections. You're saved. Overruled. And is there a phone number associated with Mr. <coughs> Garcia present on the phone ticket? Just yes or no? Yes. All right, Judge, at this time I would ask to move into evidence <coughs> State's Exhibit 78. I thought that's what you'd already done, but anyway, wish to be heard. No objection. There you go. You'll be admitted. What is the phone number associated with Mr. Garcia on the phone ticket? 15th of October, 2013. Did either Luis Rivera, the renter on the Prius contract, or Sigredo Garcia, the 
the man listed as brother on the contract. Did either of them have any connection to Dan Markell? No, we could find. Objection, Judge Calls for speculation. Sustained. All right. Did <clears throat> Sigfredo Garcia have a, a mother of his children? Yes. And who was that? Your defendant, Catherine Mike Bonner. And was Ms. Magbanoa also in a relationship with somebody in the Adelson family? Yes. And who was that? Wendy Adelson's brother, Charlie Adelson. Did you also request phone records from Wendy Adelson? Yes, for, for her phone? Yes. Yes. Showing you States Exhibit 131. that a fair and accurate copy of the information you received in response to your request for Wendy Adelson's cell phone information? It is. And what phone number is associated with Wendy Adelson? 954-803-0010. And how do you know that that number is associated with Ms. Adelson? She provided it and she allowed her phone to be downloaded. We verified the phone number that she provided. Were you also provided with the address that Wendy Adelson was residing at around the time of the homicide? Yes. And what address was that? 3303 Aqua Ridge Drive. City. Tallahassee, City. Florida. Okay. All right, Judge, at this time I would ask to move into evidence states 131, the disc with the uh, phone records related to Wendy Adelson. So objection. No objection from Mr. Garcia. Objection to your second. Overruled. I'm going to approach with some additional discs. Showing you States Exhibit 132. Do you recognize States 132? Yes. How do you recognize that exhibit? It shows the um, Donna Adelson phone records. Phone number is associated with Donna Adelson. 954-396-0997. How do we know that these records or that phone number is associated with Donna Adelson? It came uh, from a contact list in Wendy Adelson's phone. All right, and is States Exhibit 132 fair and accurate copy of the records you got, including a business record certificate of authenticity? Yes. Judge, at this time, I'd ask to move the evidence that it's 132. Sir, objection. Not from Mr. Garcia. No objection. Be admitted. Were you able to determine the address that Donna Adelson was residing at around the time of the homicide? Yes. And what was that? 9909 Northwest. 14th Court, Coral Springs, Florida. And is she married? Yes. What is her husband's name? Harvey Adelson. Showing you States Exhibit 134. Do you recognize this exhibit? Yes. 
These are phone records for Harvey Adelson's cellular phone. And our, does that exhibit contain a fair and accurate copy of Harvey Adelson's phone records, <coughs> along with a certificate of authenticity? Yes. Judge, I ask to move into evidence states 134. Objection. No objection. Be admitted. And is this phone number registered in Mr. Harvey Adelson's name? Yes. And is Mr. Adelson, at the time of the homicide, was Mr. Harvey Adelson residing at the same residence with Donna Adelson that you previously named? Yes. I'll show you State's Exhibit 133. Do you recognize 133? Yes. How do you recognize it? These are phone records for Wendy Adelson's brother, Charlie Adelson's cellular phone. And what is the number associated with Charlie Adelson? 954-254-9223. Does this contain a fair and accurate copy of all of Mr. Adelson's records in response to your subpoena, as well as a certificate of authenticity? Yes. Judge, at this time I'd ask to move into evidence States 133. Any objection? Not for Mr. Garcia. No objection. I don't know whether it was intended, but I don't think we heard a number for Harvey Adelson. Maybe it didn't intend to do so. That was 134. Would you please list the number for Mr. Harvey Adelson? 954-980-9032. In reference to Charlie Adelson's number, and he is 9223, is that phone number registered in the name of Charlie Adelson? Yes. And is that phone number in Wendy's contact information, Charlie's contact photo? Yes. Are you able to determine what address Charlie Adelson was residing at around the time of the homicide? Yes. What is that? 2518 Whale Harbor Lane, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Next, I want to show you States Exhibit 135. Do you recognize States 135? Yes. How do you recognize it? These are our phone records for the cell phone of Catherine McBonnell. And what phone number are those records associated with? 786-564-1312. And does that disk contain a fair and accurate copy of the records for Ms. McBonnell? Provided pursuant to your request and subpoena, as well as a certificate of authenticity. It does. All right. Judge, at this time I'd ask for the evidence States 135. Any objection? Not for Mr. Garcia. No objection. Be admitted. Last, I'd like to offer 137. Do you recognize 137? I do. And how do you recognize that? These are phone records for the cell phone of Daniel Markell. All right. And what number was associated with Daniel Markell? Let's find that one. 
I don't have his phone number available. I know it's a 202 area code and it ends in 8200. <laughs> okay. Um, if I said it, would you be able to say yes or no? Yes, I'll be able to say yes or no. All right, 202-276-8200. Yes. All right, Judge, at this time, I would ask to move into evidence states 137, which does contain a certificate of authenticity. Objection. I apologize, I couldn't hear who's going to this. Dan Markell. No objection. No objection. Be admitted. <laughs> I do. How do you recognize them? These are still images of the Toyota Prius passing or in the next lane of the bus that is northbound on Thomasville Road at Palmstead. Both are, yes. He'll be admitted. You bet. Set no foot. Uh, an easel and a demonstrative. Yeah. I'm afraid of the electronics, so I'm going old school with some demonstrative. Right. Not something this visible to the jury at this point. No, no. Okay. You may.
be ready for the second. Thank you, Judge. And what I need the next set of videos is about the Thank you, Judge. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Detective. Um, so let me ask you a few quick questions with regards to the initial uh, surveillance video that we saw from Premier Fitness. What we have here, is there a microphone here, Judge, or am I speaking loud enough? Just keep your voice up. Yes, sir. Is there, a, there are multiple cameras on top of the staff, correct? On, on top of the roof of okay. Premier, yes. That's, yeah, that's what I mean. So this is kind of how we're getting an aerial view, and that's what's depicted on the street, correct? Yes. And as we indicated, or as you indicated, at 9, 11, 36 seconds, This is 9-11-36. And based on your investigation in this case, is that time staff an accurate reflection of the time that took place that morning? Based on the fact that when the video was recovered from Premier, it was validated that the time on the camera system was accurate with the current time at the time. We see next, there's uh, Mr. Markell's car, correct? Yes. In the next image that we see, and we'll get there. I believe that's Mr. Martel's car again, correct? Yes. And it seems that it appears that he's driving to find a parking spot to go to the gym, right? Yes. Yes. Now you indicated that he entered into the premier parking lot through what entrance? The side entrance of Village Square Boulevard. And the video is next going to show at, at 9, 12, and 34 seconds, correct? Yes. And how far is the distance from the initial entrance that you just described that Dan Markell entered in the premier parking lot versus the other entrance? The distance you're asking me? Right. Like, so what I'm asking you is this. Mr. Markell <coughs> came in the, the entrance that you just described. Just this spot, right? Yes. Okay. And so this priest is not coming in through the same entrance, right? Correct. There's another entrance. Correct. How far from the initial entrance is this entrance? I would say approximately 250 feet. And then that vehicle drives and then enters the set, like the main parking lot area, correct? It, where, it's, where you saw that turning is the overhang for the entrance doors. There you go, that's right. So now what we have here is, it appears 37 seconds later, that that vehicle is perpendicular to what Mr. Martel's parked, correct? The cars are positioned perpendicular, correct. yes. So this is where Mr. Martel's car is, correct? Yes. And that's... A Prius. Correct. A Prius was the target of your investigation, correct? Correct. Now, you 
you agree with me that based on the aerial views, it's possible to delineate who's actually inside the field, correct? <laughs> There's no way of knowing. Absolutely. We'll go ahead and put a play here. The Prius drives, parks up some distance away, but in the same parking lot, correct? Yes. And then you see Mr. Markell getting out of his vehicle. Is that correct? Yes. Now that car coming down, that's not the same car as we saw the one up there before, correct? The white car in front? Correct. It is not the same car. And then we have some footage here of Mr. Martella entering from your gym. There he is. Yes. Now during this time, the, the Prius is still in the parking lot? Yes. Do you see if it moves? Yes. Can you see, can you see with the other cameras or whatever angles, can you see who's in the vehicle? No. At any point, you lose sight of the trees. In between camera angles with trees, yes. When it's parked up in the far northwest corner, um, where it emerged when Markel was leaving, we, we didn't have footage of where exactly it was parked up in that corner. And how long would you say he was parked up in that corner? I don't recall the time, how much time. I'm not going to hold you to a specific amount of minutes. Was it a minute? Ten minutes? Was it a duration of the time that Mr. Martel was working out? No, the, if I may, okay. the, the Prius came back past the front of the, of the business and went to the south end and backed into a space and occupied that area for at least ten minutes. So we would be able to kind of give a timeline because we'll be able to see the Prius coming back down, right? I believe so, yes. Okay. So we saw Mr. Markel go into the gym and go ahead. parks in an area of Premier Gym that you do not have surveillance footage to determine what happens, correct? Right. <coughs> Once again, for the record, if you show the same video for Martel at 9, 12, 45 seconds to get out of his vehicle and walk towards uh, the entrance of Premier, Correct? Correct. And about 10 seconds ago, we lost the visual of the silver colored trees. Correct. For the record, at 9, 13, and 18 seconds, Mr. Markel entered the premiere, correct, sir? Yes. Yes. I believe so. That's approaching back, coming back down. And the designated time shows it's 9.16 and 20 seconds, sir? Yes. So about, let's see, three and a half minutes have expired where the Prius is in an area that there's no surveillance captured, correct? Yes. And during this time, can you state with specificity the members of the jury that transpired in that portion of the parking lot? In that three minutes, no. There's no surveillance footage, so you wouldn't be able to tell the members of this jury whether or not a drug transaction took place in the parking lot of Premier. 
I, no, I would not. You wouldn't be able to tell the members of this jury in another car parked alongside the silver Prius in a drug transaction. Are you talking to the witness for the I'm jury, Mr. Zengenhead? Right, right. Come on, let's. You can't tell members of this jury if during that three and a half minute period a drug, a drug transaction took place in that portion of where the Prius was parked, correct? That's correct, I cannot tell that. So you can't tell the members of this jury whether or not another vehicle pulled up next to the Prius where a drug transaction with any kind of drug was conducted, correct? Correct. So here we go at 916. And also, at that point, you can't tell if somebody exited the, the, the Prius, correct? Correct. So if one person was in the Prius to begin with and another person got in, or vice versa, you wouldn't be able to testify with the right side. That's correct. Can I get the assistance to go to the, I'm sorry, but at this point I need to go to the bus surveillance. No. I believe it's 125. Thank you. Yes. While he's doing this, Judge, can I inquire of uh, some questions not associated with, uh, with the footage to the or detective so we can kind of keep this moving? Detective, I apologize. Um, you indicated you had a long storied career as a law enforcement officer here in Tallahassee. Is that correct? I, I don't remember those words, but I did was here for quite some time as a um, law enforcement officer. Almost three decades, sir? Yes. And during that time, you indicated that you did uh, violent crime investigations? At the end of my career, yes. Okay, and about how long of a time period did you conduct those types of investigations? Eight and a half years. Were you ever involved in any uh, narcotic-related investigations? Uh, some, not in an in-depth realm. With regard to your investigations with regards to violent crimes, did you ever investigate violent crimes committed by gang members? The, the gang member part is, is... Is there a different unit that does we have We have, yeah, we have gang invest... We have, I don't know if it's still there, but we had gang investigating people. We had a gang unit. And would that, given the fact that you have a gang unit, Detective Bison, that suggests that there is a gang presence in, 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 this, in this area? To a certain extent, but it's rather small compared to other, other places. To my I, understanding. Oh, well, since you said that, it seems like you have an understanding of the size of the gang presence here, correct? I just know it was loose-knit, and it was, uh, there wasn't a whole lot of organization to it. Well, would that suggest that there are other neighboring areas that have more strong-knit gang organizations, like t Jacksonville, or other neighboring areas, maybe Panama City? I wouldn't know about those. Judge, can I have one minute to confer with counsel? <coughs> Did you ever work in unison with the gang unit in your career? I've, I've asked them for intelligence on people that they had more knowledge of than I did. Let me go ahead and direct your attention back to the, the, to the screen. So right here we have a uh, Star Metro camera from bus 0505, is that correct, sir? I, I have it as 505. But 505, correct. And so, uh, give me the intersection right here again. That's Killarn Commerce Drive. Okay. And uh, you got to help me out here because I'm unfamiliar with that specific area. Which one is which? If, if you could, please, you have a pointer, sir. Well, 
Go ahead and show me which one is which uh, road. The bus is approaching Thomasville Road. Okay, and you'll agree with me that Thomasville Road is one of the more heavily populated or heavily uh, traveled roads in this area? Yes, it's a major artery. Major road, okay. And so at 1044 and 30 seconds, we see the clock. Now, That car right there, it's your position that that is Dan Marcos' vehicle, correct? Yes. Are there any identifying factors that you can point out to that vehicle? No. Can you read the license plate from this angle? No. Can you see Mr. Martel on the vehicle? No. It's simply a car that fits the description. Same color, potentially the same age, correct? Correct. Now, the original time that you see that uh, the car that you believe is a Honda Accord, what time was that? Do you recall? I think it was 1044. And I don't remember the seconds amount. That's 1044, 31 seconds, correct? Right? Okay. Okay. Yeah. And we'll let it run. Yes. Okay. And if you recall, sorry, if you recall during uh, the second bus surveillance that we had, bus 707, I believe it is, um, there was that one picture, which I believe uh, the government showed a still of it. You recall that? Next to the bus? Yes, sir. Yes. And you remember on direct examination, the prosecution paused it. You were able to... Uh, there was a video that had three circles on it. You recall that? Yes. Okay. And in those three circles, there were three identifying factors that you used to uh, suggest that this was a unique uh, Prius that you could be able to identify, correct? Yes. Okay. And one was a transponder, correct? Yes. One was the passenger side mirror? Yes. And the last was something on the front bumper, I believe, on the uh, driver's side, correct? Correct. Okay. In this video, can you see any of those three no. markers? So can you tell me with specificity based on your identifying factors that you did with the uh, 707 footage that that Prius is the same Prius as the one in the 707 footage? Can I say that these vehicles are the exact same car? No. Yes. And the bus is approaching another Prius, correct? Yes. And you'll agree with me that this Prius is stopped at, a, at an intersection? And this is still a Thomasville Road, sir? Yes, sir. And it stopped at a stop sign, correct? Stoplight, yes. I'm sorry, stoplight. <coughs> it stopped at a stoplight, and it's the first car that's at that intersection, is that correct? Correct. And it's the government's theory that the people in the Prius were following the people, the person in the Honda Accord, correct? Correct. There we go. And we'll go ahead and stop there. Can you make any, any of the three identifying factors that we discussed before, can you identify any of those with this footage? Not from this angle. Correct. 
Uh, it would be impossible to see the transponder because it's the back of the vehicle, right? Yes. Okay, and also you can't see the front of the vehicle where on the bumper they would have that identified, correct? Right? Yes. And more importantly, it's impossible, even though it's a great angle, you can't see the, uh, the license plate, correct? Correct. At some point, you were able to determine what the license plate was, correct? Yes. And you weren't able to enhance this video to show if, whether or not this is the same vehicle, correct? Unfortunately, we tried all types of remedies for that, but no, it was not, it was not able to be enhanced. Now, this Toyota Prius has pretty dark tints on it, correct? Yes. Do you know what level or, or degree of tints that they had? On, on this car? Yes. No. During this time period, do you see any other Priuses? There'll be one in the right hand lane eventually. And what color is it? I don't recall the color. Is that it? Yeah, that's the one I recall that I've seen numerous times. About how many Priuses when you were doing, are you able to tell the members of this jury roughly how many Priuses are located or how many registered owners there are Priuses here in South Florida? I don't, North Florida? I don't recall. I think there's, there's thousands. I had no idea there was that many. in the Prius in the left-hand lane? No. Now this is a different Seven zero seven. And this is the bus and the angle that you're able to make your delineations of the three identifying factors. Is that correct? Yes. When you get a stopping point, just saying it is. Like the jury is about ready for lunch. Sure, I can stop right now. I'm done with my my uh, analysis right. of this video. All right. Why well, don't we take a lunch break? What well, we plan to be back ready to go at one fifteen. Just leave your notes where they are. Have a good lunch. Either side need anything? Yes, Your Honor. We'll make a request outside of the prison. All right. Y'all can step out.
Can I be seated, please? Yes, sir. Thank you. With respect to the deposition for this afternoon, we were on board for 4 o'clock. I believe that the state attorney's office has secured a room in both Miss uh, Father and Son <coughs> coming in. I've made a request to the state attorney's office and hoping that the court would entertain a possible order because that would allow us to avoid any prejudice or it would allow us to avoid to mitigate some prejudice by getting prepared as quickly as possible. It appears that both of the colleges are going to breach attorney-client privilege. I assume that somebody's contacted Luis Rivera to make sure that he is on board with that. But the secondary thing, too, is that they bring their file. Um, I don't know if the court would sign an order uh, for him to bring his file or if the state would uh, do a subpoena deuces tecum to have him bring that in. My hope is to get through it today and we can move quickly into it next week. Thank you, Collins. We'll cooperate with us. Uh, and would you ask them to bring their file, please, Ms. Kappel? Mr. I did, Judge, and they agreed. All right. And we do need to deal with the attorney-client privilege issue. Mr. Rivera, do you discuss that? Yes, sir. The Collinses are meeting with their client at the Land County Jail prior to the deposition. All right. So just take care of those issues. Yeah, thank you. Right. Seems like somebody fiddled with the volume on the break. The volume is, I don't know, somebody to increase the volume. It's reaching kind of a reverberation. Nobody, I don't know, seems like it increased during the break time. All right, 115. Thank you, Justin.